Hello everyone, it's Elizabeth from The Smart Stitcher. I've got two tutorials coming up on how to make fingerless mittens. The first tutorial is going to take you through using your measurements for your hands, which you can then translate to making gloves for other people, which show you how to create the pattern, how to create a thumb piece, although you don't have to have a thumb piece if you just wanted to do the straight cuff, you can of course do that as well. But I'll show you how to make your pattern, how to create your thumb piece, and in the second tutorial, that's all about laying out your leather and laying out your pattern pieces, cutting out your leather and of course sewing everything together. So let's start making our patterns. Before we start drafting our pattern we're actually going to be measuring our hands because we're going to be making a, the mitten to fit the larger hand. Um, that's kind of common practice within glove making but if you wish to make an individual pattern for each hand then of course you can do that as well. So in order to measure, we're going to be measuring our closed fist, but to set that up, what I need to do is to make sure that I've wrapped the tape measure around and I'm not sort of pulling it really tight. It's just sort of laying flat against the skin. I'm then going to close my fist and make sure that the, it's not tight, that it's eased around. And I, where I've wrapped it and I've got that short end on top, I can then just use that as a little bit of a guide to sort of make sure and sometimes you might need to wiggle it around a bit check which is the wider measurement and I can see that mine is looking as though we are 22.3 centimeters so that is my right hand I'm just going to make a note of that measurement so 22.3 centimeters so I've repeated that on my left I've sort of wiggled it about a bit to try and make sure that I'm over those sort of closed fist and I can see that I am 21.7 so I'm going to be making the pattern to fit my right hand because that is a little bit larger. And we're creating a design for a style that has a turn at the fingers and it also has a turn at the cuff as well as a little one on the thumb. When I am sort of designing my gloves, I like the sort of the thumb to, to sort of be not quite on the side of the glove, but a little further forward than that, because I think that gives a much better fit. So these gloves are going to be designed with that in mind. And we're going to be creating a grid that looks a little bit like this that we're going to construct in just a moment. And where I've got my thumb placement, that is where our sort of thumb hole will go. However, if you don't like it there and you wanted it more on the edge, then of course you could do that. But I put my thumb where it is because I then get the side seam running down the side of the glove um, and I sort of feel I get a better fit. But you know, you could, it's something that you can play about with if you're not bothered about the seam position or you just want to mix it up, then go for it. I'm using a sheet of A3 paper and I've drawn an axis because I know that my right hand is the larger hand and that's the one I'm creating the pattern for. My vertical line is four inches or 10 centimeters away from that edge. And I've also drawn in a horizontal line that's 15 centimeters away from the base. You don't necessarily need this one, but I find it helpful when I'm getting my hand ready to draw around and to create my template. Now I'd like when I'm getting my hand lined up, I want my index finger right up against that line. I'd like ideally my wrist bone to be somewhere near this one. Now it's going to be in pretty impossible to get your forearm lined up with that horizontal line. So you just want to keep your arm parallel. Um, your fingers don't need to be apart, they can be together, but you don't want your hand forced onto the table. So you want it nice and relaxed, finger, parallel to the vertical, forearm as parallel as you can get it to the rest of that line and then we're going to draw around with an upright pencil. So I'm going to go all the way around, going right down into the thumb webbing. Now I'm going to go down in between my index and third fingers because that's going to help me pop the thumb placement in a little bit later on. So I'm going to make sure I go right down so I'm almost angling in a little bit, right down into the webbing. I'm then going to go round the rest of the fingers, keeping the pencil nice and upright all the way down over my wrist bone and down onto my page. Before I take my hand off, I'm going to make sure that I've done a few, little bit of marking. So where my thumb sort of finishes, so where that big fleshy part of my thumb finishes, I'm actually going to make a mark. 
I'm going to make sure I've gone right down in the webbing. I'm going to mark this knuckle because that's how far up I want my thumb template to come. And then I think we've got everything. So I've done my mark, mark the base of the thumb, mark the wrist bone. That's a little bit higher, but that's just a little bit of information. So we are now good to start creating our grid. If I take my hand off, that is what that outline starts to look like. And when we are creating any glove pattern, we've got to factor in the depth of the hand as well as the sort of the overall circumference so the trank itself kind of folds around the hand a bit like this sort of piece of paper so basically what we do to one side we have to do to do another to make sure that we get enough of an allowance on both sides so it's a bit like those sort of paintings you might see um, very very young children doing where they paint one side they fold it in half and you kind of create a design sort of that's completely symmetrical so we're going to be doing that with our gloving pattern to factor in the depth and to also make sure because we've got a little bit more pile here and a slightly thicker leather we want to make sure that we factor in that we need to get that on and off our hand as well so to help me work out everything and make sure that I've added the allowances on so that I go around the hand I find it quite useful to sort of treat almost the the hand is sort of at the half so divide everything in half and then basically when that's opened out i've got then the full length that i require if i didn't divide everything in by half and then i just added everything on without doing that i'd actually end up with a much bigger glove now we're working with um, a double faced sheepskin which means you've got the sort of the suede finish on one side and you've got the fur on the other. Where I've used this to make sort of several different types of gloves I know that I need to add at least two centimetres of sort of wearing ease to get my kind of overall um, glove on and off. This is why it's always a good idea to make a mock-up and sometimes you've actually got to just get hold of your sheepskin wrap it around your hand sort of open and close a few times and compare the measurements and sort of see how much or how little it moves or doesn't move um, with your sheepskin there's certainly usually enough to make at least sort of two pairs of gloves so i would look at your sheepskin very carefully and where perhaps it's not as good quality or perhaps there's sort of some holes or you know something that you wouldn't necessarily want on your finished glove use that to make your mock-up and do a little test to sort of make sure that you're happy before you cut out your nice areas so how wide do we need to make it well an easy way to work it out is by sort of looking at what do you need to sort of go around your hand so i know my hand is 22.3 and if I add on the two centimetre ease to accommodate the, the thickness and the pile, then that gives me a grand total of 24.3 centimetres. So I know that when I divide that by two, because this is where it's important to divide it by two, I will need at least 12.15 centimetres on either side. So that will basically mean that I am adding on 12.1 possibly even 12.2 centimetres that side. So my next vertical line will actually be running through this point and that will then create my grid. Something else I find quite helpful to do is to measure across the sort of the flat hand and to sort of use that measurement to sort of then just sort of check how much I need to sort of add on in order to reach that figure. So I can do that by subtracting 8.6, which is the measurement just across that flat hand to the widest point there, from 12.15, which gives me 3.55 centimeters. So I then know that if I then add on that extra sort of difference, one, two, three, eight, it gives me the same measurement. So that sometimes it's just useful if you, depending on how it's easier to see things, sometimes it's nice to just be able to work it out mathematically, but also then to just check that against your pattern as well. It's a good way of sort of cross-referencing and, and making sure that you're happy with your measurements. So my next vertical line is going to go through that point, and then I'm going to add on the allowances for sort of the cuff at the top and the base of my piece. This is where quilters, grids and rulers can be really handy because they are usually sort of fairly clear and see-through so that you can then see to get your lines 
all lined up sometimes I find that I put a line in a really strange angle or place but with a quilters ruler I'm a little bit more accurate so we've now got the side of our glove in and remember this is just half of the glove that we're building and when we come on we'll create the template for the rest so we're now going to be talking about how much of a turn you would like at the fingers or at the base if you don't want a a turn or any sort of cuff there then you just decide on your pattern where you want the top of the glove to come and where you want the base of the glove to come um, for this little turn here I'm going to be using the line that I made across the knuckle as a little bit of a guide when I actually draw the thumb template because that will be where I want the thumb to come to and then it will give me that nice little turn that I've got here so for my base I allowed 12 centimetres, for my fingers end I allowed 8 centimetres and of course then they, they fold back in, in half on each other. The next thing we need to do is to do our thumb placement and where our hole is going to go for our thumb. And what I've done is I've drawn an extra line, additional vertical line that's gone through the point at the base of the fingers all the way down through the rest of the pattern. I've then looked at my hand, I've made a little black mark where the base of my knuckle is and what we're going to do is to measure that and mine is usually about an inch and or two and a half centimetres. Yep, so I can sort of see that and that's what I'm going to mark on here. So it's just a sort of a very rough guide, I've sort of just pushed in at the base of the knuckle where it finishes. Obviously. You know please be careful about what you use i've used a black pen because it's going to show up on the camera i've then transferred that onto here so i've measured my two and a half centimeters down i've also just got a sort of a very rough idea of where the base of the thumb is and now what we want to draw in is a sort of a really nice kind of rounded teardrop shape now quite often you might think well how wide should i go within that particular teardrop and that is just having a look at your hand and you're almost sort of eyeballing it really with your ruler and it's just a question of having a look and you want to sort of just almost try and isolate that kind of fleshy part and just sort of I can see that if I isolate mine I'm pretty much looking at somewhere in the region of about four centimeters or so just covering that sort of widest part of that fleshy bit so I know that I'm kind of roughly sort of bringing my teardrop shape out to around that sort of four centimetre mark. Now we don't want to necessarily come to an abrupt point at the top here, we want to try and keep the curve sort of rounded so there's no kind of awkward corners or sort of rough edges and we're just going to map out a shape. Now if you dread drawing curves I would focus on getting one side looking really nice and then you can always trace that flip it over and just glue it down and you've got the other side of your curve but you want it to sort of look balanced so I might sort of I do tend to sort of sit and fiddle about with my curves a little bit but I'll sort of play about with that till I'm happy and then it's sort of happy that it's balanced on either side and then we've got the basis of our actual paper trank part done and then we're going to then have a look at the thumb. So to start working on our thumb piece, I've just got a sheet of A5 paper that I've just folded in half. Now we're coming back to that sort of building up one side, but actually by building up one side, we're building up the other side as well. So it's just like we explained with the trank. So when this is opened out, this will give us the total um, distance and width that we need for our thumb. Well, there are a few things to work out. The first thing is to measure around the width of your knuckle um, to make sure that you know kind of the, the distance or the sort of minimum distance that we need around that. So mine is eight and a half centimetres. We then have to also factor in some of the ease. Now I didn't add quite as much ease on the thumb. I found a centimetre wasn't quite enough. Two centimetres were a little bit too much but somewhere around one, one and a quarter, one and a half seemed to work quite well. So I've set my sort of page up and we're going to now sort of start to put all our measurements into play. Now I know from sort of experience and from sort of uh, creating gloves that I must make sure that I factor in the measurement where I sort of measure across my knuckle of my thumb so I know that that is two and a half centimetres so I've halved that and done one and 1.25 centimetres and I've created that first part of my line there. 
Now we are going to come back and add in the other measurements in just a moment but what I wanted to just sort of do was to draw around my thumb. Now the rest of my hand can sort of be off to one side. I want my thumb sort of not, we're not necessarily going to need the whole of the, the whole length but I want it to sort of have be my sort of tip of my thumb closer to the top of the page because I'm going to need a little bit more room at the base here. So I've got that lined up. My thumb is almost as straight as I can get it so that it is parallel with the line I've drawn and then I'm going to just use my upright pencil and I'm going to draw around make sure I go right into the webbing and then up around the tip of the thumb down the other side keeping everything nice and vertical I'm also going to just extend up a little bit as well because I find that gives a little bit more of a sense of sort of the geography make sure I've got everything in now before I move my thumb I'm going to mark on where the knuckle is and as long as I've got a sort of a very kind of rough idea I can refine that in just a moment so I should now be able to lift my hand away brilliant and we've got some of our sort of key marks so I'm going to go where I've sort of got the most pen and if I've kind of overshot a little bit I'm not going to worry about that particular point too much because we're now going to move this sort of base point that we've got here down by a centimetre. Now this is something I do with my other gloving patterns and I'll sort of show you why um, because we want the glove itself we want it to sort of sit in a sort of nice kind of comfy way into the webbing and what you don't want is to sort of have a sense of anything kind of hanging above it so I've moved that particular point down so I'll imagine that my thumb is going to just continue coming down to there. Now we are going to add on a little bit more of an allowance because we need to make sure that I've covered the circumference but I can use the, the rest of the thumb shape here to then help me start to sort of build out the rest of my template. So I know that my thumb has that circumference of 8.5 centimetres around that particular knuckle and that's quite a sort of solid structure so we need to make sure we can get over that. I'm adding on a seam allowance or sorry a wearing ease of at least a centimetre and a half and that gives me a total of 10 centimetres that will sort of fit around there to accommodate the thumb, the pile and the thickness of the leather. If I then divide that by two I know that on my thumb template I'm going to want my sort of finishing outside line to come at least five centimetres away from that particular fold that we've just drawn here so when that's opened out and you'll see when we finish the thumb template it will then give us the same on both sides so we'll have a sort of a distance of about 10 centimeters there so we need to then start to think about the the sort of shape of the template so we know that between our sort of baseline that we move down here which represents the sort of to a way of accommodating the webbing and um, we've got our where we want our template to come out to we then need to sort of draw in the base of our template so I'm going to use my marks for my knuckle as a bit of a guide and I'm going to just take those and get okay my the lines that I sketched in are, are a little bit rough so I'm going to just take the best line at right angles through them and actually where I've made my mark for my five centimetre line I'm going to bring another line out there as well so let's just put in a few lines to help us with our construction so I'm not going to put that in too heavily so I know that that is going to be part of my base and I know where I moved this down to accommodate the webbing is then going to come out this way a little bit more so I'm just going to get a few kind of reference lines in, some of the which I can rub out. Um, and then we're going to start to draw in our template. So we've already got that top part in and I'm just now going to bring that down. I might just sort of create a nice little curve. I'm going to come a fraction inside and just curve out my line so I can show you what that looks like in just a moment. Now we've got the straight line that comes out we've got a nice sort of little gentle curve down to the line that we moved at the base of our webbing and then we're now going to bring our curve down and we're going to sort of create it's almost going to be like um 
almost like a kind of a, a mushroom shape now i did mark on the base of the thumb um i think i might have not mentioned this when we were drawing around the thumb just now but you can see where the thumb starts to change we just want to sort of have a rough guide because that's the point we're heading to so what i want to do with this is i'm going to take a curve and i'm just going to sweep it round to go from that point down through and i'm just actually beyond my base of my thumb line but that's absolutely fine i just want to get a nice curve so because this isn't a 100 percent fitted style you can afford to to sort of get a bit more of a sort of a sweep in there so if i was to cut that out now you'll see in just a moment that we would have this kind of almost like an upside down mushroom shape which then becomes our thumb template and with your thumbs it can show very quickly if there's something not quite right with the fit now quite often thumbs are sort of quite a fleshy part of our hand and i've just finished drafting the first thumb and i kind of thought oh i'm not 100 percent sure about that it looks like it could probably need a little bit more at the bottom and i have sort of just drawn out another one very quickly and just added a little bit more now we will be doing a little bit of easing to get the thumb into position and it generally fits much better if you've got a bit more to ease than a little bit less to ease because the last thing you want is to be trying to stretch the hole around the thumb piece so i find it quite helpful to have just a little bit more in terms of the flesh and i've literally just added a centimeter on at the base and just extended the curve out i haven't actually changed any of the other measurements now when we come to put the thumb piece together i've added some letters so i've put an a at the very top just underneath the index finger and a b at the base of the thumb and this correspond to letters that i've now added to the thumb piece so points a will come together and that will give us our sort of join at the very sort of top of the finger point b sits at the base of the fold and it they're just sort of two really good anchor points to then help us work out the measurements i'm sorry to ease in let's try that again they are very good anchor points to help us to ease in the rest of the glove so you don't end up with an excess on more on one side than you do on another side something else you can do if you are sort of concerned about how much you're going to be putting in is to measure the hole with an upright tape measure and that gives you a, just a, a more accurate sense of the curve and then you can also measure the curve of the thumb piece as well now this will be or should be slightly bigger because you're going to be easing it in so if it's not slightly bigger you may wish to just adjust that curve but i would make sure that you've got your centimeters facing outwards and it's slightly tricky with these centimeters the root some of the tape measures having a metal fixed metal part so put that on one of the sort of straighter sides and then just walk your tape measure round until you can sort of then go all the way around note the measurement and then again on your thumb piece with the centimeters facing outwards walk your tape measure around again and um, just to check that that is slightly bigger obviously if you've got say more than five centimeters difference you may wish to sort of trim your thumb piece down but it will be slightly bigger because we're going to be fitting it into the hole and it doesn't feel right if it's sort of too tight or it's too awkward so you do need a slightly fleshier bit there so we're now going to be transferring our design onto tracing paper and we're going to be tracing the sort of overall rectangle that we've got on our page here and we're going to do that twice to create the trunk so that it sits next to each other so i've now just weighted my tracing paper down and because the parts of the trunk are the sort of front and the back of the hand are going to be sat next to each other i i know that i'm going to just be flipping the tracing paper in a moment so it's going to help me now to get some of my sort of top and base lines in so with my baseline i've taken my line right the way across the to the other side of the page I'm then going to draw in the vertical line but I'm not going to draw in the thumb hole on this particular side I'm just setting up that rectangle and then the next thing I'm going to do is to take the top of the trank right the way across my page as well so that you can see it's going to help us in a moment when we flip the pattern so I've extended the lines at the moment, that's fine, they'll be sort of trimmed when we glue everything onto card. But I'm now going to take the weights off 
and I'm actually going to turn the tracing paper over and weight it down again so that this time the I can line up with my lines and that's nice and easy and then I can that's it so I can line everything up make sure that my center line is nice and straight make sure that my top and the line at my base are also nice and straight pop the weights back on and then I can draw in the rest of the tray and this time I'm going to draw in the thumb hole and I'm going to draw on points A and B as well. So the final stage of getting the pattern ready is now to glue everything down onto card and cut everything out. I've left a little bit of an excess on the tracing paper so that I can glue it down and then I can just use the ruler nice and quickly to then um, slice off the excess and the bits that I don't need. I've had to sort of cut the pattern out but if you happen to notice at any particular points where your cutting isn't that smooth as you're cutting them out on the card you now have a bit of a chance to rectify that so make sure they are nice and straight. So that is the next stage is to get everything glued down and cut out. So we've now cut out all of our pattern pieces. We've got our thumb piece, we've got our trank. Now the reason we've just got the one trank is because we reverse it to create our mitten. So as we look at this particular one now, I'm looking at the right hand because my thumb will sit in here. The rest of the glove will fold around my hand like so. I've got the base with my sort of deeper cuff and I've got the towards the fingers, I've got my shallower cuff. So I've labeled that as my right hand side. I've then done exactly the same on the reverse because the same will happen on the other hand and the trank will fold around. Whoops, the card is a bit... So it's just newly glued and wanting to do its own thing. So it'll then fold around my hand and sort of fit the other way. And again, I've labeled the top and the base. I've also added the left hand side as well. So I know when I'm going to be drafting and cutting things out to cut two that are completely separate. The final thing I've just added a note of on both of them is the sort of the date. I've given the pieces a title and their fingerless sheepskin gloves. And I've also added a little note about the pile. So when you are putting your glove on, you want the pile of the fur to feel nice and smooth. So as you put your hand in, you want the direction of the pile to sort of go in that smooth direction so it feels comfortable to put your glove on. So I've just drawn a little arrow and I've just labelled it so I know that when the pile is in the right direction, my glove will go on nice and comfortably. So the next thing now is to get your sheepskin and to get marking and to get cutting out and to get sewing.